Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all of you, and as others have said, thank you to the people who who operate under very difficult circumstances around the world to supply us with this important information. Director Burns, I just want to say uh, your statement to Senator Heinrich about the, the impact and long-term consequences of our abandoning Ukraine is, is important and I think should be required reading around here. The implications are it's a 50-year mistake that would haunt this country both in Europe but also, as you suggest, in, in, uh, in the Indo-Pacific, including Kim Jong-un uh, would assess that we didn't have the staying power. He's already making noises about the peninsula. Uh, Director, Re Director Ray, you, we, you talked with, with Sec uh, Senator Rubio about TikTok. Uh, just to reiterate, it's dangerous because it allows the Chinese Communist Party to have access to an enormous trove of data about Americans. That's number one. Is that correct? That's one of the pieces of it. There, there are several. And but. the second piece is the, the power, that the, the misinformation and uh, sort of policy direction that it enables uh, the Communist Party to exercise, correct? Well, I think the second piece is the, is the algorithm, right? In other words, the first is the data, the second is the algorithm, the third is the software. But the problem is, is not TikTok, it's the control by, by China. If TikTok were divested and owned by an American company or a Belgian company or a British company, we wouldn't have uh, this level of problem. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Um, the uh, who controls Mexico? Are the are the is the government of Mexico in control or in the are the cartels in control? And and how do we how do we get at the the problem of the drugs the the, the fentanyl? By the way. I did a little calculation a minute ago. About 15 people have died in this country of overdoses, mostly fentanyl, since this hearing started an hour and 20 minutes ago. That's how serious this problem, one a day in my state of Maine. How do we get control of this, this problem? I'll start, because there are a lot of us, obviously, that are working to um, help support those who were on the front lines of this, which include the FBI, obviously, and DEA and DHS and others who are really focused on this question. But on the first point, Senator King, with respect to Mexico, I mean, I think there's no question that it is a challenge for the government of Mexico to uh, to deal with the um, cartels. And there are parts of the country that are effectively under the control of um, the cartels in certain respects. And yet at the same time, I would say that our cooperation with them has improved over time. And I think um, Director Burns and Director Ray may have more to say on this, but uh, but this is an area where we've really been able to work with them to try to we, help to... Uh, obviously, yeah. it, it, we have been able to work and we, it's improving, but this is a drastic problem that should be treated as such in terms of the impact uh, on Americans. Yeah. Uh, how it, maybe this is a DHS question, but uh, Director Ray, do we know how fentanyl is actually getting in? Where is it? Where is it coming? You mean coming? Well, yeah. How does it get into the U.S.? It's coming through a variety of means, including at ports of entry. Um, but there's a variety of ways it gets in. The part of the challenge of fentanyl is, of course, how small it is and how easy it is to conceal and how easy it is to be innovative in ways to get it across the border. The vast majority of the fentanyl that's killing Americans is, of course, coming from Mexico. And the vast majority of the precursors for that fentanyl is coming from China. Well, I, w I should mention that in the supplemental that's uh, pending in the House, which we always focuses on on Ukraine. There's also a major fentanyl uh, blocking uh, provision that would be very important to this country to get to to be have enacted uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Director Haynes, you're nodding, but the record doesn't show nodding. Can you? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It's not coming to the intelligence community in that case, but there are it, it, funding, obviously, for uh, the capacity to do greater detection and things like that that DHS would be uh, deploying, I believe, and among others, and absolutely agree that this is a fundamental issue. Um, and we are, yeah, we can also talk more in closed session, I mean, about some of the organizational things that we're looking to do but, to improve But we have capacity. a major bill to address fentanyl in that supplemental, if we can get that out of, uh, out of its uh, limbo in the House. Uh, General, one, one, one question. I'm concerned about a gap. NSA can, can talk about foreign intelligence gathering not in the U.S. Here's my worry. 
a St. Petersburg, Russia uh, troll farm sends or hacks information in the United States through a server in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or California, does that create a gap? Talk to me about the relationship between yourself and NSA and the and and the uh, and the FBI. I, I just worry that that there's a there's a place there where we may we may lose contact. Uh, Senator, thank you for the question. So, was, so if we think about this right now today in the context of, of threats to our elections, uh, we spend an enormous amount of time collaborating across all the elements of the U.S. government to make sure that we're aligned and that we're appropriately using our authorities to be able to, to garner whatever information is required to be able to identify a foreign threat. First and foremost, we are going to collect that threat of a foreign intelligence target outside the United States. And so one of those tools that really assist in this type of scenario is Section 702 and our ability, because if, in, in, by its very nature, if there's an origin of that threat, that there's a foreign entity communicating uh, within the within uh, the United States with a communications provider, it offers us an opportunity under Section 702 to target that foreign intelligence threat outside the United States. And so with the reauthorization of Section 702, that would ensure one means by which we are able to see the foreign part of that communication. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 